Let us all reflect from a sinful life. What can we expect? Return to Allah. Let us all reflect from a sinful life. What can we expect? Return to Allah. Let us all reflect. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidil Mursaleen Amma ba'du fa'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajim Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim As salatu wa salamu alayka ya Rasulallah Wa ala alika wa ashabika ya Habiballah As salatu wa salamu alayka ya Nabiyallah Wa ala alika wa ashabika ya Nurallah Welcome to our program, Let Us Reflect. Today we will cover some important points about the obstacles in the path of repentance, which elements of decisions or which elements of life become obstacles for one to repent sincerely in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some narrations which will encourage us to seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But before we move on to our main topic, I would like to share with you a narration which expresses the excellence of sending blessings in favor of the best in creation, Al Mustafa Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wasallam. Sayyiduna Abdullah bin Amr bin As radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, he says that whosoever sends blessings upon our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wasallam once, whosoever reads the Ruz Sharif once, or sends a supplication of blessings in favor of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wasallam once, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his angels send blessings upon him 70 times. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad. Following on from our last episode, it's important for us to remember that there is a limit in terms of the time that we have to repent or the time of repentance. When that limit is reached, when that time comes, Beyond that time, there is no scope for repentance. There is no acceptance of repentance. In light of this concept, I would like to share with you our first hadith of the main part of our session that our beloved Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam said, "Inna Allaha yaqbalu tawbat al-abdi ma lam yugharghir." The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam said. Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts the repentance of his servant before the gargling of death, before that time when he is about to leave this world, that very moment when his soul is being taken from his body. So the limit for repentance is that final moment or those final moments when the soul is taken from the body. Mullah Ali Qari alayhi rahma, he writes that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts the repentance of an individual until his soul reaches his throat. Mullah Ali Qari alayhi rahmah, he clarifies that what is meant by the soul reaching the throat is when death becomes a certainty, when a person knows that he is about to die. And those are his final moments in this world. When death becomes a certainty, after that repentance is not accepted. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as mentioned in the Quran, وَلَيْسَتِ التَّوْبَةُ لِلَّذِينَ يَعْمَلُونَ السَّيِّعَاتِ There is no repentance for those who commit evil deeds. حَتَّى إِذَا حَدَرَ أَحَدَهُمُ الْمَوْتُ قَالَ إِنِّي تُبْتُ الْآنِ Until when death comes to one of them, he says, now I repent. وَلَلَّذِينَ يَمُوتُونَ وَهُمْ كُفَّارُ Nor is there repentance of those people who die in a state of disbelief accepted in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the two types of people mentioned in the verse, one, the person who is committing sinful actions, and then when death comes to him, meaning death becomes a certainty, he starts to say, or he turns towards repentance and he decides to repent. Such people who only turn to repentance when they are literally about to die, and people who obviously die in a state of disbelief, their repentance is not accepted in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is mentioned in Tafsir ibn Abbas that when death coming to one of them, this expression means that when they see the angel of death. And more often than not, people see the angel of death before they die. Mufti Ahmad Yarkha Naimi alayhi rahmah, 
he clarifies that the ghargara of death refers to seeing angels before death. And this is obviously a certainty that death has arrived. When a person enters this phase, meaning the phase of naza, naza literally meaning withdrawal. And when we look, when we use the word naza in terms of death, life and death, it means when the soul is withdrawn, or the soul is taken from the body. And he clarifies that when people see the angels, when death becomes a certainty, repentance from disbelief is not accepted. And the example that he gives is the example of Pharaoh. When Pharaoh was drowning, he embraced faith. Why? Because death became certain for him. This phase or this moment is too late for one to embrace faith and to become a believer because the unseen matter has become seen. The angels have revealed themselves. Now there is no denial because the unseen has become apparent and is being witnessed by the person who is leaving this world. For this reason, the repentance of Pharaoh was not accepted in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Before we move on to the obstacles and solutions related to repentance, meaning which elements are, can become or potentially are obstacles for people and how we can counter these obstacles when trying to adopt uh, sincere repentance. But before we do that, I would like to share with you some narrations which express the, the importance of seeking forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there is encouragement followed by the solutions of some problems people face or they think they face. Imam Hakim mentions in his Mustadrak, once a man came to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi Wasallam and he, he expressed remorse by saying, my sins, my sins. Um, it was an expression of his regret and his concern for his sins. The man said this twice or thrice. Our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi Wasallam instructed him by saying, supplicate or read this supplication. Allahumma maghfiratuka awsa'u min dhunubi wa rahmatuka arja indi min amali. O oh Allah, your forgiveness is greater, more vast, greater than my sins. And I have more hope in your mercy than I have in my deeds. So this was the supplication our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam instructed him to read. When he read these words, our Prophet ﷺ told him to repeat it once more. He did so, and then he was told to repeat it uh, for a third time, which he did. Then the Prophet ﷺ said, Stand up. Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forgiven you. It is mentioned in a hadith of Ibn Majah, our beloved Prophet ﷺ has said, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O oh my people, you are all sinners except for the one whom I have saved. Therefore, seek forgiveness from me. I shall forgive you. Whosoever among you becomes certain that I have the power to forgive, then he presents my power as a means, a wasila in seeking forgiveness. I shall forgive him. It is mentioned in another hadith of Ibn Majah, Sayyiduna Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhumah reports, our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam said, whosoever makes istighfar, meaning seeking forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whosoever makes istighfar incumbent upon himself, necessary upon himself, Allah azza wa jal will remove every concern or worry from him and grant him comfort from every difficulty and grant him sustenance from an unimaginable source. We have so many concerns and worries in this world. We face so many difficulties from day to day during our lives. We worry about our sustenance. We worry about how much food we can provide for our families. We worry about how much income we have. In the hadith that was mentioned, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens the doors of ease in terms of every element mentioned. Those who have worries and concerns, their concerns and worries are removed. Those who are worried about facing difficulties through seeking forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 
Allah removes the difficulties or grants ease in terms of facing the difficulties. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also opens this door of sustenance from a source which he cannot even imagine. A person does not even know how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is the master of all means. He is Malikul Asbab. He creates such a means for a person that, that he grants him sustenance without the servant knowing how this sustenance came to him. It is reported in Shu'bul Iman, Sayyiduna Anas radiallahu ta'ala and who reports that our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam was once traveling and he said, perform istighfar, seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So our Prophet is giving this instruction to the companions radiallahu ta'ala anhum to do what? To seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sayyiduna Anas said, we sought forgiveness, meaning we complied with the instruction of the beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Then he sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said, complete it 70 times, meaning perform istighfar or seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 70 times. He continues in the report saying, when we completed this number, the beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said, the man or woman who seeks forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 70 times a day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives 700 of his sins. And indeed, the one who exceeds 700 sins in a day or night is a most ill-fated individual. So there is encouragement for us. We sometimes say, what is the benefit of saying Astaghfirullah? One thing to keep in mind, when you say Astaghfirullah, focus on the meaning, I am seeking forgiveness from Allah. So you should be thinking about this. Astaghfirullah means I seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In light of this hadith, do it 70 times. And with the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 700 of your sins will be forgiven. Isn't this in itself enough encouragement for us to be seeking forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And here we are sitting at home in heedlessness or lost in negligence. We don't have any real passion to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have lost this feeling to sincerely turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and seek forgiveness from Him. Just take that step. Come forward, seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and observe and witness how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens the doors of His mercy for you. We know about the importance of repentance or we have some idea about the significance of seeking forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some of the narrations that were shared today and mentioned in previous episodes no doubt are a means of inspiration for those who reflect. The purpose of mentioning these narrations, these verses of the Qur'an, these prophetic traditions is that we reflect upon them. Our session is not just our session, our program is let us reflect. So all these matters that are mentioned are for our reflection. If we just listen to something and we say our response is SubhanAllah or MashaAllah and that's it, then we will not maximize benefit from the guidance given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. We won't really benefit from the clarifications, the explanations of our pious predecessors, of the scholars of the past. We need to reflect and think about these points. We need to reflect upon the points of wisdom expressed by our pious predecessors explained by the scholars of this religion. Now I would like to share with you some of the obstacles which people face when they want to repent or they think about repenting and how these obstacles can be countered. The first thing that I would like to mention, an obstacle that people face is that people are heedless of the outcome of their sins. People become heedless in terms of what will happen after this sinful phase of life or what is the result of these sinful actions. And the reason for this is many people look at things that are in front of them. We live in a materialistic world. We look at things and decide to do things based upon what we can see, the benefit that we can hold, the benefit that we can observe, the benefit that we can 
physically see. When we don't see something like this, especially when it's to do with matters of the unseen, we become lazy. We do not reflect as much. And in extreme cases, people become more sinful because they don't see the apparent result of their sins. What is the solution to this problem? This mindset that people have where they do not think about the results of their actions, how can they actually change their mindset? One way they can do this is to think about how they change their lives for the better based upon things which they have not physically experienced or seen themselves. For example, if a doctor says to someone, if you don't cut out the fried food, uh, the sugary food that you consume, the, the diet that you have at the moment, near future you will have, you may have some heart problems, you may develop diabetes, you may be afflicted by other illnesses. Now, the person has not yet experienced any of these conditions, but he trusts the opinion of the doctor, the observation of the doctor, the knowledge and expertise of the doctor. And based upon the doctor's knowledge and advice, the person starts to refrain from certain uh, foods or a, a certain way of life or changes his diet for the better because he knows if he does not do that further in his life or in the near future he may face problems. Without comparison, Bila Tamseel, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has clearly expressed the results of sinful actions in the Quran. Our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam has clearly mentioned in so many prophetic traditions the results of sinful actions. Even if we do not know the specific narrations, we know as believers that if we live sinful lives, there is accountability to come on the day of judgment. There is punishment waiting for the sinful who are sent to hell by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is torment for people who have disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this world. Knowing this and having certainty of this or believing in this, yet not refraining from sinful actions doesn't seem logical at all. On one hand, people are accepting and taking the advice of the doctor in this world who is giving them advice for their benefit in a short life in this world. On the other hand, we have the re all that religious advice, the admonitions in the religion, the warnings in the religion. They come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They come from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Those warnings and those injunctions are ignored if one can follow the advice given by people of expertise in this world and change his life, surely one can change his life for the better based upon the advice of the Quran and Sunnah. Another obstacle that people face is that they have been living sinful lives for such a long time or they have developed such a pleasure in their disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that they have this attitude that I can't live without this way of life, this lifestyle that I have. I have to perform these sinful actions to keep myself going. This attitude that one may have of, I cannot live without these sinful actions, this is just the trick of the devil. When a person thinks about his life, he knows that his life will come to an end. How do we counter this? The solution is you think about your mortality. You think about the short period of your life, which is not guaranteed, the moments of your life or the, the life that you're living in which there is no guarantee in terms of how long you live. When this life comes to an end, you face a hereafter which is everlasting. If you can't refrain from action and you're saying this now that I can't live without these certain sinful actions, what will happen in the hereafter? When not only will you not have the chance to do the things that you want to do, if you are seized by the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that punishment may be a lasting punishment if one dies with disbelief. One of the things which causes uh, the loss of iman, the loss of faith at the time of death is this continuous disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, people who continuously disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the scholars have clarified in their books that there is a danger they will die without iman. So here, 
The person is worried about not being able to live in a short life without the sinful actions and the hereafter is waiting for him which is lasting in which potentially he may not be able to do anything that he wants because of the torment faced by as a result of his actions. Remember, sometimes people think they can't do something without experiencing the benefit of the action they are encouraged to do. When a person truly turns to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he experiences that sweetness of faith, he experiences that feeling of contentment when he remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he devotes himself to the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When he experiences that contentment, that satisfaction of his heart, then he will truly understand that sins do not bring contentment. Sins only give a temporary or momentary pleasure. That does not last at all. The contentment that is attained through the adherence to the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is something that is lasting and that is food for the soul. This is why once he enters that phase, once he experiences the beauty of the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will realize that he can live without those sinful actions. Another obstacle in the path of repentance is this thought that people have that I have a long life ahead of me, many years to go. Again, this is linked to our previous uh, obstacle. This obstacle is more people thinking that they have uh, the time to repent later on in their lives. This is not a wise approach to life and to repentance. Repentance is something which should be done straight away. One should not think that there is plenty of time for him. We see so many examples. The, the solution to this is think about the examples of death that you have seen around you. Surely you have seen young people die. Surely you know about people dying who are younger than you. And yet here you are, or well, here we are thinking about repenting in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala later in our lives, there is no such guarantee. Sayyiduna Luqman Hakim radiallahu ta'ala and he once giving advice to his son, he said, O oh my son, do not delay repentance for death comes suddenly. This is the reality of life. We're thinking that we have so many things to do, planning for our lives, our ambitions, our aspirations, and death comes suddenly. Death is not delayed or affected by our, by our plans, our aspirations, the, what we are planning to do tomorrow, the week after, the month after. When the appointed time arrives, death will come, so one should not delay repentance. Insha'Allah, we will cover more obstacles and solutions in terms of repentance in our next episode of Let Us Reflect. We pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enables us to be sincere in our efforts to serve Islam. Ameen bijahin nabiyil ameen. Keep watching Madani channel. Sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad. Let us all reflect from a sinful life. What can we expect? Return to Allah. Let us all reflect from a sinful life. What can we expect? Return to Allah. Let us all reflect.